Hello, so today I am reviewing Red Light. The storyline of Red Light is psychologist Margaret Matheson and her assistant study a paranormal activity which leads them to investigate a well reowned site which resurfaced years after his toughest critic mysteriously passed away. This is quite a big all star cast. We've got Robert De Niro, Saga Weaver, Cillian Murphy, Toby Jones, Elizabeth Olsen, and Craig Roberts, which it's cool to see Craig Roberts go from something like Submarine, which was a little, well, it was quite an independent film in my opinion, but it was a brilliant film. And it's, it's cool to see a kid, he went from being in the show Tracy Beaker to being into much bigger films and I'm liking how his career is going now. There was some mixed reviews on this and some saying that it was good, some saying it was bad, some saying that it was a letdown around near the end, but I ignored those reviews and I still went and saw it. Now this film starts out really well, it's, it starts out with them going to this house they think this whole paranormal thing is happening in the house, or this, the people that live there do. This opens up with showing that all these paranormal things are all fake and how all these people are doing this are all frauds. There's like one guy who thinks he can heal people but he's just got an earpiece in and there's someone talking to him that has learnt what these people have and everything. He thinks he can get rid of stomach cancer and that but it's all just someone talking in the ear saying, oh this girl has stomach cancer and tells the person to come out of the audience, puts the hand on the stomach and he's like, you are cured! And it's that sort of thing. It's showing that all these paranormal sort of psychic things are all frauds. And then we have Robert De Niro coming along and he's coming back after all these years to do these new shows where he, you know, talks to the audience, says that he can cure them everything. And it's them wanting to know if he really is a fraud. And Sorry Weaver is really good in this. The relationship between Sorry Weaver and Cillian Murphy is really good and I really did like it. Robert De Niro, he's meant to be blind, so he's a psychic and he can figure out all these things, he can do things, he can bend spoons and everything. It's all well done on those parts. And Craig Roberts, I think he did well in this, but because his accent is so strong, like the accent that he has goes through the American accent, but you can tell from his very strong accent that the American accent begins to go through a little bit, but it's still, he's a, a really good young actor and he does well in this. Elizabeth Olsen, I really do enjoy her. You know, I, I didn't like her that much in Silent House, which I saw recently, but I thought she was really good in this. She's a, a bit of the annoying girlfriend at times. To he's meant to be Cillian Murphy's girlfriend, but she's still good. Cillian Murphy is brilliant as always. He's just an excellent actor. I think everyone did a good job in this as acting. They did a very good job. I really did enjoy it. But halfway through, I guessed the twist. I, I was like, I'm watching it, and I was like, yeah, I can, I can guess where this is going. I can guess what's really going on. And then when they actually say it. It's like the director was sort of not really taking the piss, but it does this thing where the guy turns and it's like, it's something you would think you would see in a sketch or something like this person turns and they're like, I'm not going to say what happens, but they're like, and then, and then, you know, and then like the camera will do this weird, it will zoom in very slowly, very slowly into them and they'll be quiet for a minute and then they'll be like, she is eating cereal. But that's, that's not, that's not what they say in the film, but that's just what, you know how the twist was revealed, that's Craig Roberts character who says his thing and it zooms in on him and then he says it and I was like, yeah I, I guessed that about half an hour ago, I, a lot before that I guessed it about 20 minutes into the film what was really going on. So there's a twist and there's things that, it gets all explained, there's one little thing that didn't really get explained properly but you sort of figure it out and then it's all good and everything, it builds it up really well and then you get to the end and you're just like, you know that. If someone goes and sees this, most of you will probably get the twist about halfway through or a bit in it. You will know, like, you'll be like watching and you'll be like, yeah, it's obvious. It's obvious what's going on and everything. So I'm going to give Red Lights a 7 out of 10 because I did really enjoy it. I thought it was good, but it has a lot of jump scares. There's those bits where things will happen and, you know, there'll be the someone banging their hands down on the piano. So it'll be that really loud noise that happens and because the speakers are so loud in the cinema it will try to make you jump you know with a really loud piano because like something will fall off a shelf something will explode by mistake like a machine in the film what well, they had the machines they were using and everything but i still think it's a strong film sort of a good sort of horror thriller that works well and everyone does a good job with the acting i know it's not out in america yet i know it's getting a limited release in america on the 13th of july so if you live in america I'd say still go and see it if you're a horror fan, or if you're not a horror fan, if there's not any other films really showing, and this is the one that you could go and see, then I say go and see it. I now have an Odeon Premiere card, so on a Tuesday, you get 25% off, and it was £4.23 for me to see this, so I was like, you can't really go wrong with that, it's so cheap, so it was all good. It's not like I'm paid £7 like a 
did to see Top Cat. So I hope you all enjoyed this review and I shall see you all later. Goodbye.